What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are heading into the next couple of tournaments getting ourselves ready to hopefully make a push for Roland Garros. If you missed out on the last episode, well, you will missed out on a bit of a frustrating time continuing to hit a bit of a wall in the quarterfinals at the Alicante and Santo Domingo Opens going out in three tough sets in each of those quarterfinals. But again, we're still in and around the top 150. It hasn't been a total disaster. But of course, if we're going to start jumping up those rankings, hitting the middle part of the season, we need to start either getting to some semifinals or at least getting to some finals. So we'll see what we can do in today's episode. It's a pretty big episode today because we are heading to a ATP 250 event. We've qualified for the Bucharest Open. So I'm hoping that we can get past this first round today. So we're going to go straight into the match and see how we do. And while we're playing at the Bucharest Open, our other young protege in the academy, William Janssen, is going to be playing in Cairo in his event. So we'll keep an eye on his results as well and see if he is able to make a deep run in that tournament. And as we mentioned at the back end of last episode, if we do win today and we do manage to get past this first round opponent in Oscar Ott, Again, he's in the top 130, so probably not going to be the easiest challenge for us. But if we do get through, then we play either Liam Brody or Stan Vavrinka in round two. So, pretty big opportunity here to get a, a big opponent in the second round. So here we go then. First service game of the day. And we put the first serve in. And it's a nice one-two combo to get us the first point of the game. Of course, this may well be the biggest tournament it is definitely the biggest tournament we've played so far this year i think we might have played a i don't think we played a 250 actually last year i think the highest we played was the challenger tournaments before wimbledon i think they were sort of the biggest level of tournaments so far that we've played so this may well be the biggest tournament that we've played yet and we've made a good start on this first service game and we win it to 15 so good start so far a couple more games have gone by pretty quickly. No real opportunities or points given away. I think we've won one point out of his two service games. And it's been the same on the other side of the net as well. So good service game all round from both players. And again, we're at 4-3 on save still. 40 love on Oscar's save. And he absolutely buries that one away. I'm going to try and change tactic here and go for a bit of varied play and see if that does anything. And try and just give us something different on his service games because that's where we're struggling at the most. Our service games have flown by as well. I mean, we're 25 minutes in and we're at 4-4 already. So you can tell service has been the uh, order of the day so far. And of course, guys, if you are enjoying the video so far as we... Go to 4030. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All your support on the videos has been greatly appreciated. Um, and I've been really enjoying this series so far. And hopefully there's a lot more to come. And of course, we've got F1 Manager 24 coming out next week. So that will be on the channel again. And I know a lot of you watch the F1 Manager videos as well. So it'd be great to see you around for that as well. As we go to juice, the first juice on either opponent's serve. Backhand there. Bit of an awkward angle for Oscar to deal with, but he's put it long. We go to serve again. Forehand into the corner. And we've put it long on the backhand. So a bit of pressure building here on this service game. Serve goes in. Forehand to the wide area. Train blows now. And there we go. Oh, it's a good shot. That's a good return. And Oscar gets the advantage. Shot into the net. Back and away. He Oscar just can't quite get it. Just changing it to be a bit more disciplined on the tactic and to go a bit more attacking. Oscar with a volley into the into the mid court though, and he goes to another break point. 
It's a bit of a weak backhand. Oscar's coming in now. He volleys it away. Oh, he's put the volley wide, though. We do tend to struggle when people come into the net against us. I have noticed that over the course of the first sort of, what, 16 months of our career. Let's go back to Juice. This feels like a real big pressure moment. If we can get through this, I feel good about the rest of the match. Serve down the middle on advantage. Trading forehand and backhands. And we put it away and we hold out for 5-4. So we're at 6-5 now. Held the uh, next service game pretty comfortably. Let's see if it goes to a tie break. Two big serves there, making the points pretty quick. Early lead. Tried mixing up the tactic a little bit to try and use a little bit less spin on the backhand and try and use some passing shots if we can. Ah, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. And it goes to tie break. Easy service hold. Now it's really going to be who can hold the nerve in the tie break. And we give away the mini break early. And when you've got a service game like Oscar has, you can back it up with quick aces and put yourself in a nice comfortable position. And that forehand just goes away quite easily. And he's put that volley long, so we get a mini break back. Got to try and hold our serves now, though. Otherwise, it's uh, pointless getting that mini break. If we come in for the volley, hits the passing shot. Oh, and he's put that well past us, and it goes to 4-1. And a nice ace down the middle takes it to 5-1. And it's 6-1 now. Five set points for Oscar. It's going to have to be a meltdown of biblical proportions, I think, if we're going to turn this one around in this set anyway. And it goes long. That's two. So now one ace will do it. Oh, and he's, put it, he's drilled it long. 6-4. Puts it, puts it wide. Get the return back, but he gets the forehand back, and unfortunately, we lose the first set. So back to the drawing board for us. And we're in the early stages of the second set, and unfortunately, we are 15-40 down. I feel like if we if we lose this break here, it might well be the end of the match. And a tight first set. I just hope we don't turn it into... Having had a tight first set to totally losing it. Very much focusing on his forehand at the minute. And we've buried that into the deep into the corner. We have changed it a little bit to try and be a bit more attacking. And a bit more power when we're in an attacking phase of a rally. And then trying to sort of gain more time when we are defending. And we've just put it long to give him advantage. And on the return games, we've had little to no change from the first set. I've changed, tried to tweak the, f the return to serve as well, so we stood a little bit further back to try and give us a bit more time to see what's happening with the ball. Um, and we've hit a lob there. Uh, it wasn't a great lob at all. And Oscar puts it away for the break, so it's 3-1 now. And unfortunately... A couple of service games go by, and we're now down two match points. 15-40 on our save. That's a great put away for a volley. And I'm just to try and put some pressure on Oscar and give him a service game to, to think about, but he drills it away. Simple as that, and unfortunately, we miss out on a big opportunity at the 250 tournament. But it's, again, like everything early on in our career, it's a learning experience and hopefully we learn from this and, and go into the next tournament learning some lessons and hopefully we can put a good run together in the next one.
So in terms of Janssen's week, he managed to actually get through to the semi-final, going out in three sets to the eventual winner, um, who managed to beat the third seed in the final. So a good run there from Janssen being the number one seed, getting to the semi-final. It's points on the board, which is the most important thing for him at the moment. And I think we should be able to get him in the top 500 in the next few months, I think. And so we're heading to Italy for our next Challenger event, a 75-level event. So there's, again, good points on the board. We're going to be second seed, taking on a, a wild card in Delian, who we've beat a couple of times already. So hopefully it'll be a fairly easy route to the second round. And it is a hat-trick of wins against Hugo, 6-3, 6-4. And into the second round we go. And in the second round, we'll be playing another Brit in Jan Choinsky. He's been close to the top 120th in the world in the past. He's currently close to going out of the top 200. Powerful baseline player. Very offensive player as well. So it'll be a test for us, but hopefully we can get through and get ourselves into another quarterfinal. And we managed to come through in three sets. Three tight sets at that at six seven seven five six four, but we found a way through to get through to that quarter final. So in the quarter final, we've come through in three sets against against Giovanni, and it's six seven six three six four. Again, it's another one, but it's a breakthrough in terms of the quarter final stage, which is nice to see, and hopefully we can go into the semis and get ourselves into a final and get a good chunk of points on the board. And in the semi-final, we'll be taking on 18-year-old Brazilian Yao Finesca. Again, another baseline, good offensive baseline player. Can be both offensive and powerful. He's got varied play there as a strong tactic for him as well. So, And he's had some decent runs. At the Tunis Open, he got to the semi-final. Balletta Open, he got to the round of 16. And Mercia Open got to the quarter-final as well. So... Decent prospect we're going to be taking on here. He's been as high as 156, so probably in and around the same sort of uh, rating as us. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough test if we're going to get through to the final. Here we go, then. First service game of the semi final. Good crowd attendance as well, which is go always good to see. I think we've done pretty well on clay, to be fair. I wasn't sure how we would play. Didn't really get much clay last year in sort of the bigger levels. It was sort of the second half of the year where we got into sort of the challenger events and, you know, it's kind of hard to judge where you're at in terms of your level when you're playing sort of lower level opponents and you're on the ascendancy like we were. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we get to, say, qualify for the Grand Slam, if we're able to knock one or two opponents out. But I think at this late point of the sort of Roland Garros clay season cycle, I think we are going to be facing the prospect of having to qualify for it again. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be an interesting one as we get a point there on the first service game. And we've fluffed that return a little bit. And I come into the net, hitting the drop shot, hit another one, and we go to 40 30. Forehand in. Oh, and he puts that one away. And in our second service game, we are 30-40 down. And we don't get a good return off him, so it goes into the net, so it goes to Juice. Serve out wide. Good forehand away there to go to advantage. And if you compare this with the first round of the Bucharest Open, where 25 minutes in, we're at 4-4, we're only at 2-2. With quarter of an hour gone. So, yeah, this could end up being a, a big, tight battle, which is what you would hope in a semi final, really. And in the next service game for Yao, we've actually got a break point here. He serves a let. Second serve now. This is a good opportunity to get a break, and we've netted it. Oh, that's frustrating. That's very frustrating. And he goes to advantage. That's going to hopefully not bite us. And he serves a nice down the middle. And now we're at 5 6, still on save. 40 love up. Serve down the middle. Oh, we've netted the first one, but it's looking like another tie break is in our near future. 
just hoping we can come through this one. It feels like we haven't won a match in a while since when we've been watching it. Um, and I'm just hoping we can come through another tight encounter here as we go into the tie break. And he puts that one away. And again, he, he's not necessarily had big weapons as Finesse. Alfonseca, sorry. He's not necessarily had a big serve or a big forehand. He's just been able to move us around quite well at, up until this point. And it goes to two, love. And now we serve. After he gets that mini break early. Good forehand. There we go. Oh, just got there. Just chipped that back. Long rallies now. You can see backwards and forwards. And it's now free love. And there we go. Four love. That's a good forehand away, and this has been a pretty easy tie break for Yao to get through. Forehand down the line, and we get our first point in the tie break. Is it too little too late? The odds would suggest yes. Nice serve down the middle there. That's That should be a nice easy pass on the backhand, and it is. It's now a set point. Oh, backhand into the net. Gives him the first set. Looks like it's going to be another frustrating day at the office. And early on again in the second set, we are now love 40 down. And much like we did at the Bucharest Open, after a, after a tight first set, losing, losing a tie break, facing the prospect of going down to an early break, but that's a good forehand on the line. We know we need to work on our skills a lot this year. We need to find a way of getting some big weapons, and that's a volley that goes long. But we do need to... We need to find... We need to find a big weapon in our arsenal to give us the ability to close out points a lot quicker like some of our opponents do, because Yao's got that break there. But I think we also need to work on this return game, because... I can't really remember m watching our player break anyone too much recently. And I think that's because we're facing much bigger servers. We're taking on bigger hitters. And I think we're just finding it difficult to sort of deal with that, really. Oh, and that volley just goes long. And it's 15 all in the response game. And right on the line, that return a save. But Yao just puts it. In a great place to get beyond a forehand. And the backhand just not really working at the minute. That's a drilled backhand. But he's got he's got the ability just to place that right on the line and it goes to three one. And we've got to juice on Yao's serve, but he's put that away for an advantage. Second serve comes in. Oh, we had such a good opportunity to put that one away. Stays at 4-2. And we're now down a match point, 30-40 at 5-3. At and just hoping we can get at least to a juice backhand to the forehand. Oh, we shanked it out. And we get knocked out by the young Brazilian. Another frustrating day at the office. 6-7, 3-6. But in some more positive news, Janssen 
has got through to the final in the Antalya 13-8 tournament. Antalya 8, is that? Yeah, Antalya 8 tournament. Or is that 13? I don't know. The Antalya tournament in Turkey, anyway, that he's playing in. He's managed to win, and he's got 15 points. So he managed to win in straight sets, 6-3, 7-6 against Dev. So that'll be a nice jump in his rank and possibly pushing him into the top 600. So we'll have to see, obviously, what that shakes out at when the rankings get updated. And it's actually pushed him into the top 500 of the rankings. So again, Janssen in great form at the moment. And equaling, it's well, he's made his best ranking appearance so far. So cannot complain at that. And again, starting to show why we signed him in the first place. Hope. Hopefully, we can work on his stamina a little bit in these next couple of off weeks that he's got. And we'll see where that takes him. And with that semi-final appearance in Cagliari, we, that we've got coming... Well, that we've just had, sorry, at the uh, Franca Villa El Mar Open. We've got ourselves into back into the top 150, going up a few places. And yeah, hopefully, we can go into the Cagliari, Cagliari Open and have a decent run of it. It's going to be probably... Well, it's a 175 tournament, so you've got someone who's almost in the top 30 in van der, Sch van der Sandschup, who's number one seed, so some big competitors. And we've got Andujar in as a qualifier in the first round. So a good opportunity, again, to get into the second round. And we'll have to see how we do in the next episode. As always, folks, like I mentioned earlier on, if you have enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you when we play in Italy.